Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers and we are back with another ranking video and today's is going to be a requested ranking video we're going to be looking at the MX versus ATV series of games. Now MX vs ATV is actually one of the longest running racing series that is still around to this day. It's probably the longest running motocross or ATV series that still is around nowadays. And there's good reason. A lot of these games are absolutely beloved. A lot of them have become cult classics and have really become the stuff of legends when it comes to motocross or ATV games. The series does have humble enough beginnings. The company that created the series, Rainbow Studios, actually first created an ATV game in the early 2000s known as ATV Off-Road Fury. They'd make a couple of these games, and then they would also make a game called MX Unleashed. And due to the popularity of both of them, they actually would combine them to get MX vs. ATV. And I think it's fair to say that MX vs. ATV would go on to be a lot more popular than the MX series and the ATV Off-Road Fury series, but those series are still good nonetheless. The series has been a staple of THQ as well, whether it was the old THQ putting out the old MX vs. ATV games or the new MX vs. ATV games put out by THQ Nordic. When you think of THQ and racing games, if you're not thinking of MX vs. ATV first, I'd be really surprised. Nowadays, this series is beloved, and a lot of these games are cult classics thanks to the excellent handling of the vehicles, the superb track design, throwing in a lot of realistic elements, or the really cool reflex system, and of course, the kick-ass soundtracks. And here in 2022, we actually have a new MX vs. ATV, MX vs. ATV Legends. THQ Nordic provided me with a review code to look at the game early, so major shout out to them, they're awesome, that's pretty cool, and yeah, just big thank you to them for that. And for me personally, there's no series of motocross or ATV games that I like more than MX vs. ATV. I have some fun memories with ATV Off-Road Fury on PS2, but MX vs. ATV is definitely my favorite. I got a lot of good memories with some of these games. And so I thought, hey, we're going to rank them. We're going to rank all of the MX vs. ATV games. Now, we're only going to be looking at the MX vs. ATV games. No ATV Off-Road Fury or MX Unleashed. And we won't be looking at the handheld ports that a lot of these games got, but we're looking at all the MX vs. ATV games and we're going to be just looking at everything. How do the vehicles handle? How are the courses? How much content is in this game? There's a lot of content in a lot of these games, especially for racing games. How's the microtransactions? Are they out of control? How's the vehicle selection in general? How's the music? Just kind of everything, you know, and I'm going to be giving my thoughts on each of these games. A couple of these games, I've got some really fun memories, and a couple of them I hadn't actually played until I was making this video and got them for dirt cheap. And before we get started, I would like to say that I don't think there's any bad MX vs. ATV games. I think some are clearly better than others, but I wouldn't outright say there's a bad MX vs. ATV game. And that all of this is just my opinion. And let me know down below what your favorite MX vs. ATV game is, or some fun memories you have with it, or, you know, something like that. Like, share, comment, sub, all that good stuff. Let's get right into it. What do I think is the worst of the MX vs. ATV games? I know I might be ruffling some feathers, but I have at the bottom MX vs. ATV Alive. Now, I remember when this game came out well over a decade ago on like 360 and PS3 and being thoroughly disappointed, and that feeling really never left me with MX vs. ATV Alive. While I still think it is a good game and it is a decent enough racing game, I wouldn't say it's anything really above average. And I'd say that there are some lacking aspects that can lead to a kind of mediocre feeling when it comes to Alive. Now, MX vs. ATV Alive does get a number of things correct. I think that the controls and the feel of the game are actually pretty good. It really just uses reflexes, which was just awesome. When it comes to the controls and handling, I think it does handle really well. The controls were probably the best part of the game. I thought the tracks for the most part were pretty awesome too. I thought a lot of them were well designed, they were fun to go through. I thought these were good. I feel like when it comes to the core gameplay, Alive absolutely nails it, and I can see why some people really do enjoy the game. Unfortunately, I feel like everything outside of the gameplay just isn't all that great. I feel like the pacing and general progression in this game is very slow and just kind of feels like a crawl. It kind of sucks. It becomes really quite repetitive despite the game's short length. It's actually one of the shorter MX vs. ATV games, and when it comes to content, it doesn't have anywhere near as much as the other games. And despite that, it still felt kind of repetitive. You just kind of play through the same couple tracks over and over and over and over way more than the other games, till you finally get some new ones and then you play those until you get sick of those too. I thought the vehicle selection wasn't so great either and I thought that the general customization could be quite a bit better. And unlocking new vehicles and general progression, again it felt lacking compared to the other games. 
And you know, I think I realized why the progression kinda sucks, and it's the main reason I was disappointed with Alive all those years ago, and it's that this game is just full of annoying DLCs. This is really when the DLCs showed up. DLCs were becoming all the rage for developers back in the early 2010s, and MX vs. ATV jumped on it as well, and I just hated how many DLCs there were in this game and how much stuff they locked behind the DLCs. I felt that this game was just kind of infested with DLCs to the point that the main game was lacking. I feel like that the game was arguably not even finished in some aspects because it was just turned into DLC and some of the coolest stuff you could get for a live, it was all the DLC and it's like I don't want to pay extra for this. The game should be complete and then they can add DLC later over time to add new stuff to it, not take stuff out of the main game or stuff that should have been there and make that DLC. Uh-uh, that just didn't fly with me. I didn't like it then. I don't like it now. And I think that the game is just lacking compared to the other ones, but it still is a fine enough game. Oh yeah, soundtrack is super mid. But I wouldn't recommend it, especially not over these other games coming up. And so here we have MX vs. ATV All Out, one of the newer games in the series. Now I remember when this game came out a couple years ago, people were really dunking on it saying it was trash, that it was super buggy, it looked like crap, it played like crap, and it was infested with microtransactions and not worth playing. I didn't play it back when it came out, I played it this year when I was making this video, I got it for dirt cheap. And after putting a decent amount of time with it, I'd say it was a pretty decent game. It was a fun time, it was a fun racing game. But I can absolutely say if you're looking for anything simulator based or anything even kind of close to realistic, just don't even look at this game. This feels way more arcade than anything MX vs ATV has ever had. Like it feels crazy in comparison. They really just throw all the realism out the window and just ditch it completely. The handling and general physics feel nothing like the older games, it's its own beast entirely. And speaking of the physics, they're okay in this game. I'm not gonna say like they're great or even all that good, I'll be real, Alive is much better physics than this game. Sometimes the physics get really weird and glitch out. This game does have glitches still, it's not totally fixed. And there were a number of times where the vehicle just did not behave at all like how I would expect it. Usually in these games I don't have a preference between the motos and the ATVs, but this game I really did prefer the motos actually. The game tries to handle progression a little bit differently and I actually do kind of like it. You have this big open area you get to explore and there are some collectibles and you can just kind of freestyle and do some cool tricks and all that. Or of course you can just do all of the events from a menu or go find them on the map itself. When it comes to the progression of this game, I think it's decent. I think it does start a little bit slow also, but it's nowhere near as slow as Alive, and it does pick up the pace quite a bit, and when it comes to the events, you will be unlocking more and more events quickly. You aren't just stuck on the same half a dozen tracks, racing over and over and over till you finally unlock something new. When it comes to the vehicles, I think that the selection is decent enough, I think it's pretty okay. The customization is alright, and you can upgrade these vehicles, but the upgrades the upgrades in this game are just weird, I don't really know where they come from, obviously not a place of realism, but they're fine enough. Speaking of fine enough, we have the tracks. I think the tracks that are actually designed, like in the stadiums, I think these are actually pretty alright. I think these are decently designed. But a lot of the races are in the big open area, where it's just kind of like checkpoints that you go through in the big open world. And I mean, these are fine enough. It, it's clear some areas of this open world favor certain vehicles over others, but overall I thought the tracks were decent enough. And when it comes to this game's performance, I mean it seemed fine enough on my computer. My computer's pretty old nowadays, so the fact that it actually ran decently on my computer is nice. And then when it comes to the music in this game, I mean it was okay. I'd say it was pretty mid though as well. And unfortunately this game has a ton of microtransactions as well. They're all over the place, they're in your face, they're on the menus, they're pretty annoying and I don't like them. All in all, or all out I guess, I would still prefer this game over Alive, but just barely. I think it's because this game felt more complete than Alive, and I wasn't disappointed with this game like I was with Alive. I guess I tempered my expectations, but I still wouldn't really recommend it. Alright, so here we have MX vs ATV Untamed coming out in the mid-2000s. This was the follow-up to MX vs ATV Unleashed, and it definitely feels like Unleashed, but at the same time it kind of feels like a lesser Unleashed. When it comes to the controls and the feel of this game, it does feel very similar to Unleashed, and when it comes to the physics, I'm sure it's either the same physics or it's incredibly close to Unleashed's physics. I don't really have any problems there. I don't really have any problems with the tracks either, I think most of them are fine. Nothing really stood out all that much as like amazing or must play through, but I think there wasn't really any bad ones here, it was just kind of fine. 
I feel like this is one of the slower playing MX versus ATV games, but at the same time it might just be the emulator and my aging computer that's making this game run a little slower than it should. It did not feel as fast as Unleashed though. And because we're comparing it to Unleashed, I don't think this game is anywhere near as much content as Unleashed. This game still has a fair amount of content, especially for a PS2 racing game, but compared to Unleashed, no. Unleashed had way more than this. But this game definitely embraces the wild side more than Unleashed did. It is called Untamed. There's some crazy vehicles in there that are not motos or ATVs. There's like a monster truck, there's like golf carts. Yeah, it's, there's some funny stuff in there. This game even has something called cheat codes. Anybody ever heard of those? Probably not. Now when it comes to the soundtrack of this game, oh yeah, it's good. It's pretty good. It's your classic 2000s edge, hard rock, and you know what? That's exactly what I want from this kind of game. And this kind of music, it, it's a really good throwback nowadays. I love it. Now I don't have an absolute ton to say about this game, mostly because it just feels so similar to Unleashed in a lot of aspects. It feels like more of an Unleashed .5 rather than the next mainline entry of MX vs ATV, but this game is still pretty fun. I don't have an absolute ton of time in this game either, but the time I do have in it, I did enjoy it. And if you're looking for a classic MX vs ATV game, yeah, this is a good one and I do recommend it. Okay, so here we have MX vs ATV Supercross Encore. I'm looking at the PC re-release. Now, the original Supercross released a bit after Alive, and I know that a lot of people really did not like it and were not fans of it, but Supercross Encore looked to fix just about everything, and you know, I actually think it's one of the better MX vs ATV games, and I had a lot of fun with it. Now when it comes to the feel and general control of the vehicles in this game, it definitely feels the most like alive. I would say generally it is pretty good when it comes to the controls. For the most part it is fine to actually good. All of the vehicles really do handle pretty much how you would expect them to and I really do like the whole reflex system still being here. But I will say sometimes the physics are a little questionable, they'd occasionally just feel a bit wonky and really it was just with the bikes that it didn't react how I thought they would but it wasn't a common enough occurrence to where I'd say it was bad or anything like that. It was just alright. Now when it comes to the vehicle selection and the general customization, I think it was decent enough. It was actually pretty alright. It wasn't mind blowing. There wasn't a ton of options here, but you know, it was actually alright. It was more than alive, that's for sure. They didn't have to rely hella on DLC. This game still does have a fair amount of DLC in it, don't get me wrong, and that is kind of annoying, but this game isn't incredibly in your face about it, and it doesn't seem like they're actively taking content away to make it DLC. This game has an absolute ton of content to it. There are a ton of tournaments to do. Fair amount of vehicles and then a ton of tracks also, like this game has a ton of different tracks and a number of different stadiums. I thought it was actually pretty cool how many there were. I was like, wow, there's actually a lot of tracks to this game. When it comes to content, I think that Supercross Encore is one of the best games in the series. There is a absolute ton of content to this game, like there is just a lot to see, a lot to do, and a lot of racing, that's for sure. And it doesn't really get that repetitive as you can mix it up and change up different tournaments however you want. You can stop halfway through one and try something else if you start getting a little bored. And yeah, you could put a lot of time in this game, well over 15 or 20 hours if you want to try to complete all the tournaments. That That's a lot, especially for a racing game like this. It is a lot, and you know, I did have a lot of fun with this game. It was actually quite a good time, and it felt a bit refreshing coming back to an MX vs. ATV game after all these years. Where it just feels so fun to try to master those jumps, where you just try to land it perfectly in that sweet spot so you get a nice boost basically of speed. I, I really do enjoy that gameplay loop, and this game, it really nailed it in my opinion. It really nailed that entire gameplay loop and made it maybe the most fun that it's been in the whole series. It's not all amazing though, the game does have some microtransactions, some of them can be a little annoying, and then the soundtrack in this game, yeah, it really wasn't that great, it's my most disappointing aspect for sure, I was just like, huh, this isn't even mid, this just isn't very good. I thought the soundtrack was pretty disappointing. When it comes to the graphics, I thought they were pretty below average, to be honest. They didn't look all that great, and the game had a number of graphical glitches, and the game just had some glitches in general, it felt kind of buggy at times. But overall, Supercross Encore I think is actually kind of an underrated racing game and I think that it is actually still pretty fun and if you like moto games or ATV games, yeah you should give it a try if you haven't already. So here is MX vs ATV Unleashed, the first proper game in the MX vs ATV series and you know when it comes to nostalgia this is probably the most nostalgic game on the list for most people. 
I have read so many comments throughout the years about how people have good memories with Unleashed, how people have fun memories in the multiplayer or love the soundtrack or love how the bikes handle or just love this and that about the game. And you know, all these years later, MX versus ATV Unleashed, this game still freaking rules. This game isn't just one of the best motocross or ATV games on the PS2, it's one of the best racing games on the PS2. It is a great time. Having the motos face off against the ATVs, what a great idea, and then throwing in some crazy other elements, yeah, just really good idea, and this game still is a really good time thanks to a number of different aspects. This game has actually aged incredibly well, almost shockingly well. The controls are actually still really solid. The physics are still really good. The ATVs and the motos, they actually control really nice still. The physics are still there. It's still actually good. You don't come back, it's not clunky as shit. It's not really awkward and weird. It still controls great. When it comes to the physics, it is decently arcade. It's nowhere near as arcade as, say, All Out, but it doesn't really go for that realistic simulator vibe, and the reflex system isn't there with the right stick. Doing tricks, though, is still incredibly satisfying. The handling feels just so smooth, even all these years later. It's just a really nice feel, and the gameplay loop of, you know, going up on these big jumps and trying to land in the right spot to get that boost of speed that I talked about in Supercross Encore, oh yeah, it's absolutely here, and it's just as good, really. This game feels really fast. It has a really good sense of speed to it, and you feel like you're just whipping around these corners and going on these giant jumps, and you know, one reason it feels so great is the tracks. All these years later, the tracks are still really really good, there's really not any stinkers here, and a lot of them have gone on to be just complete classics, like some of people's favorite tracks in not only racing games, but in all video games. And you know, there's a reason for that, because the tracks are actually really good, and there's a lot of them in this game, whether it's in the stadiums, or you're just racing around in, well, I guess, the wildlife as you call it, or the big open areas, yeah, it's pretty good. One of my favorite aspects of this game is the variety. This game actually has a lot of variety, especially compared to the other MX vs. ATV games. There's a ton of different environments here, and a lot of the environments actually control a little bit differently from each other. It's not just all the same dirt and mud that you're driving through. The game really does mix it up. This game has a ton of personality and charm to it as well that really has aged actually really well. There's of course cheat codes, there's other cars to drive in this game, and then there's the soundtrack. The soundtrack in this game is legendary. People love the music in this game, and I do too. It is so 2000s and it is just me. I get a lot of nostalgia, I get a lot of hype for this. I really do love the soundtrack in this game. There's no bad music here. It is exactly what I'd want from a game like this. A lot of hard, lot of hard rock, a lot of heavy metal. It's great stuff. Nickelback's here and you know what? It's actually good. Who could have guessed? I'd love to play the music for you, but YouTube would really hate me if I did that. So well, that's not going to happen. But yeah, this game has a ton of content, it is aged very well, the controls are great, it still is like a complete package. It is one of the finest MX or ATV games, and I have zero problem recommending it. If you like racing games, you really should give this game a shot, as it is actually really quite good. And here we have the latest in the series, MX vs. ATV Legends, and again, this was provided to me by THQ Nordic, so I'm giving another shout out to them. They're pretty awesome, they're pretty nice, and this is pretty cool, and you know what? This game is actually pretty good. I was pleasantly surprised, and I would say that it is one of the very best games in the series. When it comes to the feel, this game does feel somewhat realistic, but it has a lot of arcade. I think it strikes a really good balance, but something I really like is the customization in this game when it comes to the feel. You can actually customize the controls and the feel quite a bit in this game, like you can turn the reflex mode off, you can make the vehicles handle a bit more realistically, you can make it so you can control them easier in the air. I do like the customization here, I think it does strike a good balance between that arcade craziness or if you want something more simulator based. Obviously this game doesn't go into sim territory, but it's not trying to be a simulator, not even close. This game does have a nice tutorial as well, I think it introduces all the mechanics very nicely, and it's pretty quick too. But yeah, playing through this game last weekend was a really fun time. This game has a lot of variety and it all feels really nice, whether you're on the bike, the ATV, or the UTV. I actually really do like how the vehicles handle in this game, they feel tight, they feel like they got some weight to them. The bikes have a nice feel and they control like how you think they would. I really like taking them around quick turns and doing these long jumps with them. It's, it's a good time. It feels really nice. Again, not simulator and it's not trying to feel like reflex, but it's way more realistic than All Out was. 
the ATVs actually feel really different from the bikes, which is pretty cool. It definitely has a lot more weight and you'll be drifting around a lot. You won't be able to make those quick turns like you could with the bikes, but the ATVs felt great, way better than all out. And then the UTVs, these are pretty hefty boys. I mean, forget really turning here, you just kind of drift around, but I actually think that these are the best UTVs like in the whole series, control wise. When it comes to the physics, I actually thought it was pretty good in this game. I thought everything handled pretty much how it was supposed to. The game does have its odd moments where it just kind of either glitches out or isn't really sure what to do, but those are few and far between. For the most part, I thought the physics were really good, and I thought that the drifting was especially good. This might be like the best drifting in the whole series. It was incredibly satisfying with the drifting. Maybe it's that visual effect of all the dirt flying up, but it was just really satisfying. Speaking of the visuals, I thought they were actually pretty solid in this game, especially for a PS5 like kind of budget title. Thought it looked pretty good, the game ran really well, didn't have any frame rate issues. But I did have the occasional graphical glitch. Speaking of glitches, I did have a number of glitches while playing this game. I'm going to chalk most of them up to it's probably because I was playing the game before release and there'll be a day one patch that fixes most of these. I'm hoping, I'm assuming, maybe I shouldn't do that, but I'm assuming that most of these glitches will be fixed. Some of the glitches were funny, like people showing up on the racetrack and just driving through them. Some of them were annoying, like the audio syncing just being completely messed up and the volume going crazy. And some of them really did hamper the experience, like where the textures just disappeared, it seems. Something that they were hyping up before the game came out was the environments of this game. And you know, the environments are actually pretty good. There are some nice free ride areas that you can explore and get some collectibles and do some little time trials and stuff. I like these, but the environments for the races, I actually thought were pretty great. There's like desert, there's forest, there's snow. There's mountains and there's stadium. Now, a lot of these aren't new to the series. They've been in older games, but something that this game is really good at doing is giving them all a different feel. They all do feel very different from each other. They all feel very distinct. It's, it's really cool, actually. I actually thought that some of the tracks were the best in the series. I really did like the variety and I liked how there were different routes in the racetrack. Like you can take different routes to get to the same point. Sometimes there's little shortcuts even hidden in there. I thought it was really nice. I thought when it came to the game's pacing in terms of its career, it was also pretty good. It does really focus on the MX career way more than the ATV and the UTVs, but I still thought it was pretty good. There's a ton of content here. This game is actually quite long. And as long as you don't get bored of it, I could see someone getting easily 30, maybe even more hours out of the career mode in this game as there's just a ton of events to do for all three vehicles. The game also does have online play, but real big shocker here, I couldn't find anybody pre-release. When it comes to the microtransactions, I actually couldn't find any in the game at all. I don't know if it's because it's pre-release, but I could not find any. I searched. I hope it stays that way, but I really doubt it will. Also, music-wise, I'll be real, it's pretty mid. It was okay. Smashing Pumpkins is here, though, so I guess that's pretty cool. And I guess the last thing to mention would be the customization of the vehicles. I do think the customization is actually pretty good, and there seems to be a decent amount of vehicles you can choose from in the game. And I would recommend that if you're going to upgrade any of these vehicles, you want to really crank the difficulty up, because if you're playing on normal and you upgrade your vehicles at all, this game is just way too easy. So in conclusion, I have no problem recommending Legends to anybody who likes MX vs ATV games. Maybe you took a break over the last couple of years and you want to try to get into it, or maybe you're into racing games in general. I think you should totally check it out. I think it's pretty good, and I think it can only probably get better if the game gets continued support throughout the year. But I don't think it's the best MX vs ATV. I think the best in the series is just going to always be Reflex at this point, because MX vs ATV Reflex is just a fantastic game. Reflex has really gone on to be one of my favorite racing games probably ever and easily my favorite dirt bike or ATV racing game. Reflex really just played to the series strengths the most, more so than any other game. It just had it all. It had the fantastic controls, the great physics, the amazing soundtrack, a ton of content to it, and when it came to the tracks I think it's almost unmatched how great they are. Even the free ride was hella good too. This was the first game in the series to introduce the reflex system where you control like the weight of the bike or ATV or car I guess with the right analog stick so you're using both analog sticks to try to maintain balance and do some quick turns get some high jumps and just go really fast and you know this was an amazing idea like I can't think of many racing games that have anything even kind of similar to this it makes it so much more in depth and it makes it so much more engaging to just race in this game. There really is a lot more to balance here and I just really like the feel. Speaking of the feel, all the vehicles feel fantastic. Like this is the best feel that the series has ever had. And when it comes to the physics, I think it really is the best as well. It's just excellent. 
I feel like every game after Reflex has just been trying to imitate Reflex's physics, and you know, I don't think any game has been able to do it as well as Reflex. A lot of games have the great physics, don't get me wrong, but Reflex? Reflex really is the king. It controlled the best, it felt the best, and there was no weird moments like some of the other games where it just kind of glitches out. There was like no glitches at all, it was really nice. So now we go to the soundtrack, which was also great. It's what you were looking for, that kind of mid-2000s, early 2010s, heavy metal, rock, pop, it's really good stuff. Now when it comes to which vehicle I like the most, I actually really do love all three. My favorite is the ATV here. The bikes feel great, they handle great. The ATVs, I love the weight and I love jumping really high with them. But then this game also has just straight cars. It is like kind of trucks. I guess they're UTVs also, but they look kind of silly in comparison to the later games UTV. Anyway, it's pretty cool. I like all of them. They all feel really different from each other. They're all very satisfying to, to control and they're all a really fun time. And hey, thankfully you got some really good tracks to go on. I think they're all really fantastic. The design is great. I think that all of them are really fun to go through. And yeah, there's just not really any stinkers here. It's all good. And then the free roam areas. I think these are pretty fun to explore as well. And I know a lot of people really do like the free roam in these games. And I just don't think it's really gotten better than Reflex in this aspect either. And then this game has an absolute ton of content to it as well. There are just tons upon tons of events. You can spend easily over 20, maybe 30 hours just doing the events in this game. There's a lot to see. And then there's the online. There are actually people still playing this game online because a lot of people think that the series never got better than this. I can tell you, you will find games, at least on PC, in 2022. And then there's no microtransactions, they're not locking anything from you by making you pay, which is always great. And I really wish that the series stayed like that, but that's a different story. Reflex, I really do think is the best one. I'd love to know what everyone else thinks. I think most people, most fans can seem to agree that Reflex is the best one, but if not, I'd love to hear why. That's it for this video, hope everyone enjoyed it. Thanks again to THQ Nordic for sending me Legends. Really did have a good time, great weekend playing it. Really fun time, and making this list was fun too. This series is pretty near and dear to my heart, especially when it comes to racing games. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. If you made it to this part of the video, comment bricks as in the thing they use to build houses. Have a good one. Bye-bye.